and he was actively involved in the creation of the course Sustainable Seafood Barriers and Opportunities in the Fishing Industry. Oliver, welcome. I challenged you in the run-up to this session to describe the course, or at least to try and describe the course by using three foods, okay? And you came back to me and you said, well, the first food is algae. Can you tell us why you chose algae? Algae was probably, I think, the, uh, the easiest one and probably the quickest one, I think, that came to mind immediately. Uh, and there are a few good reasons. I think one of the, one of the key um, things that drew algae to mind here was that it really, I think it challenges you. And it's one of those kind of foods that a lot of us don't even maybe recognize as a food. It pushes your boundaries. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have eaten uh, sort of like algae infused pasta. There's plenty of sort of interesting amalgamations of algae out there, or even just seaweed. I mean, seaweed in itself. So super, super rich, and I hope this course is also, is also super rich um, for you guys who take it. It's also super fast. So I think uh, relating to this course, algae is sort of one of the one of the fastest growing um, one of the fastest growing organisms. Uh, in the ocean, right? It grows a lot quicker than any uh, land-based plants and it doesn't cost anything, which is also similar to this course. It doesn't require any inputs to grow that even in a farm. You just kind of let it flourish naturally off what's in the, in the environment around it. So I thought a good, a good start and a fitting kind of um, lineage to this course. Okay, brilliant. That was algae. Then you came up with a second one, which I found quite surprising. <laughs> Potato. Can you tell us why? Potato? Yeah, this <laughs> this one probably requires a little bit of explanation. I just didn't want to keep it too bland and go all with seafood. I know it's World Ocean Day, but I thought I'd kind of take it a little bit left field. So I think one of the uh, one of the key reasons here is that I think potatoes are sort of that sort of often serve this uh, utilitarian kind of functional role. I think for us as a food in general, that kind of got us through wars and famines and through plenty of sort of hard hard times as a bit of a safety net. They're not the, the kind of the, the, the sexiest food out there, but I think they're very functional. And I think just like this course um, and, the, and the kind of like basis of knowledge that it will present to you, uh, it's that there's some of these foundational keys to pulling the ocean out of a very tricky spot that it's kind of currently in, um, I think can't come from just basic knowledge. Um, and this course is sort of only a, only a humble beginning, I think, to understanding all those complexities, but the advice and the tools that it offers um, should help to play, uh, to play a bit of a role in giving you a better understanding so you can sort of support the oceans in their, in their hard time, I guess. So the knowledge is sort of the, the potato, drawing a bit of a loose string there. But. <laughs> I love it, I love it. And the, the third one was mussels or any kind of shellfish. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, any any kind of shellfish. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it back, I'll say mussels. I think maybe mussels is, is, is the best choice here and there's a very good reason I think so I, at least at Food Unfolded when we uh, when we publish any sort of story around seafood I think one of the most consistent pieces of feedback that we uh, that we keep finding is that seafood is just confusing and that's just in a general sense on uh, on across all levels you know people are wondering what species do I consume or what do I choose what do these eco labels mean on the side of the can of fish uh, or even with this uh, recent documentary, that Netflix documentary, a lot of people were wondering, is it true? You know, are the oceans going to be empty by 2048? Like uh, Sea Spiracy, I think it was called, suggested, I think. And I don't really blame us. I mean, I think the industry's done a pretty good job of making it difficult to, to really understand um, and make sense of it all. And that's made it tough for us to, to lend our support to worthy causes or to do the right thing. Uh, and I think the humble muscle, which is a, is a fantastic, choice if you're going to choose seafood uh, fits the bill for a number of a number of reasons i think there's the first and most obvious to me is that they're super dense in nutrients so they're actually an amazing nutrient source um, and i hope this course just like the algae is, is kind of full of good information that's small but it's full um, they're also most importantly i think they're incredible purifiers so they purify the water around them they take uh, nutrients and they can turn sort of silty water into pretty clean water and actually used as a means to to clean polluted waterways in different parts of the world um, and i'm really hoping this course can kind of act like that for you can kind of take some of that confusion that you have 
um, and it can and it can clarify those thoughts for you. So you leave here um, not only kind of knowing about the issues, but also the solutions that are out there and what you what you should actually kind of be doing. At least kind of nudge you in the right direction, so you feel like you're a bit more sure-footed with your seafood choices.